Well, hey friends, good morning. It's a little muggy this morning. I think summer summer has definitely found us here. We're up at we're up at the shop, up at the container. We've got a lumber load coming today for a cabinet order. So we are gonna see how well a fairly large cabinet order and axe handles can coexist in a small shop. And good luck with that, huh? But anyway, um, this is part of what's going down. We're having to shuffle a lot of stuff. And this board's so darn big. It's a piece of white oak that I'm gonna try for handles it's air dried it's been air drying for years i got this uh a friend of mine from southern illinois but, uh i can barely move this thing and um i really need it out of my way so it's going up in the rack and we're going to get this cut up into axe handles now this was actually quarter sawn which for handles is not so hot it's very pretty it would make a great looking dining room table but uh, I'm going to be going through a lot of wood here, so I will come up with another piece for a dining room table. Plus, it's got this big old hump in the middle of it that I'd have to surface this, and I really don't feel like surfacing it. So, that said, um, we're back to reading the wood. And the first thing that I determined was which way the tree was growing, because it was a little confusing. Um, you know, I've got a similar width going all the way down the tree. Um, but, uh, so I'm just looking at the ends. I'm starting with the ends and, you know, it looks fairly normal. You've got the center of the tree here, um, heartwood. And that's probably the reason for all of the cracking in here. And then the grain is, is going up and down. Now this is not, so this is not a flat sawn board. So if you were to lay your patterns this way, you'd have your grain orientation going the wrong way. However, however, what we have is we have a board that's over three, th three inches thick. So anyway, I was thinking, um, I've got my two patterns. I've got my 30 inch wedge banger pattern and I have a 36 inch straight handle. And what I was looking for is a handle that's gonna fit within this thickness so let me try to stand this up on edge with one hand if i can do that okay so we've got it up on edge and um it's actually really nice and so is the other side now this portion of the tree from here to here more than likely we are not going to use it um it'll just be firewood or maybe we can make handles out of it but as you see the wedge cracker fits on that edge beautifully and we've even got some curvature to this grain so if you see well, let me get the camera on there if you see this grain this is really you know we have a lot of opportunity uh, to make a really neat handle so what this does is this really maximizes this board as far as the waste because we're not we're not removing tons of material around the perimeter, which is kind of cool. And we've got straight up and down grain. We've got enough for a 30. And since these are straight handles, I'm not really worried about, so we'll come over and grab the 36. And we're just barely We'll have to do some uh, finagling around, but it looks like we're in good shape. It goes without saying that these, the first two or three handles will get hafted and then get tested to see, and to make sure that the wood's not overcooked. Um, but, uh, you know, looking at this, so let's say that's two inches. So one, two, three, Maybe four, four thirties and four thirty sixes, and then whatever I can get out of that bottom below that check. Um, and maybe not. Now that I think about this, I'm looking at that check down there. And so I'm gonna go to this end. Now that I'm looking at this endo here, I'm seeing heartwood here, and I'm seeing more heartwood here, which indicates that 
this was a crotch. So, um, that's probably going to cut this down to about here for probably to about here. So, um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take the straight edge and the power saw, the electric power saw, um, and we're going to rip this and see what we have. And then I'll bring okay, you back. Friends. Well, we have the first, I guess what you would say, processing of, of the tree. And we have it cut into three pieces. So now that these are manageable and I can lift these, I can put them on the cart and deal with them later. And I've made space for them in the container, which I need, because I have a unit of plywood coming today. Oh, you know and other stuff so I've really got to all of a sudden get very efficient about where stuff's going on which is going to mean cleaning the shop mm -hmm. other than that um, let's see I may cut this grain off to look at this grain a little more closely um, this is junk this is all heartwood and and junk for handles but we'll we'll keep it we'll hang on to it and see what we can get out of it.
Now something like this is about the only time <coughs> that I would just repetitive cut a board uh, for a handle or for handles. Um, generally I like to situate, especially with curvy handles, uh, situate the grain in the widest board possible that I can get. That's kind of, that wastes a lot of wood. So I'm constantly thinking of ways to conserve on wood without sacrificing uh, the beauty of palm swells and whatnot. So this guy, this has got a big knot here, so that's out of there. This is good this way, and it's good this way. So no can do on this one. We'll deal with this in the morning. This piece is quite nice. Now I had to cut that hunk off of there because it was winging up and it would have gone through this table saw funky so I just took it over to the chop saw real quick and cut the funk out of it and uh, it seems to be working good. Um, smack the crap out of them and test a couple of handles um, before we haul off and uh, make a whole bunch of handles. So just looking at this one, let's see if we've got that in there, just looking at this one without getting Oh, there it is. You guys were in the frame. So just looking at this one, it is probable that I can get two guys out of this. So let's mark it with the two. So basically, this is just handle selection. And I will go back and rethink. And this grain, I'm liking this grain quite a bit. Thinking the same. And this wood I think is, is special uh, in the fact that I helped cut this tree down. I helped mill it with a wood miser. This was on my buddy's property. Um, he had a tornado blow through his place. And I went down and helped him clear because he literally couldn't get out of his place. He lived down in a, in a, a, a valley on, on a creek. And uh, so we cut, we cut timber for a uh, good week, anyway. His friend came down and he invited me down again um, when his friend that was a sawyer and had a wood miser. And so <clears throat> all of this was milled and then I drug, uh, I drug the board home and have sat on it since 2007, 8, somewhere in there. Uh, so I know this is dry. And really all I need to determine <clears throat> is whether this will, can actually stand the punishment. Um, and so we're going to find that out. Um, like I said, if it, if it works out, uh, this wood will be a known entity from start to finish, from tree to milling, to uh, preparing the blanks for an ax handle, to making that ax handle to out the door. So that stuff's kind of important. Uh, this one's got to lose this. This was part of that crotch. So there's a one. There's a one. I wonder if we can get, get two thirds on here. No, we can't. So this is a one. And this one's no oh, checks down there. I'm not gonna let it happen, are we? But it could be it could be. 
maybe it could be two pounds, but this check comes all the way down to here. So this has a check here too. So you know that's just a quick evaluation and a quick run through of uh, wood selection. And I've got to get home. Also another little tip. Don't leave wood sitting. It's a bad habit to get into. Leave wood sitting on your cast iron. I mean, I know this is dry. On one time I left some cedar from uh, the lumber yard there. <clears throat> And the moisture content came back the next morning and my top, whole top was rusted where the wood was. And I was not happy. So basically, uh, that stuff that we rough processed outside uh, the other day is now ready to go up in the rack and await uh, further processing for the duplicator. Um, so yeah. It happens that fast now. I've really been working hard in the last uh, last year, well, more than that, probably a year and a half, with this goal in mind to get be able to process uh, wood quickly um, and work with as wide of boards and as thick of boards as I can. And that 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 even goes a little bit beyond uh, just basic woodworking tools. You've got to get You've got to put your feet in that industrial tool uh, arena in order to straighten a three inch thick board um, or to be able to run this. Uh, I still don't know how this uh, black locust is going to go through the, it's kind of an unknown, going to go through the bandsaw. So we'll see. I have the right blade. Um, but it's really neat to be able to. I mean, never, never in my wildest dreams a few years ago did I think that my chainsaws would be sitting next to my cabinet bench. The chainsaws are just as valid and just as important to this whole equation as are other people's bands, uh, sawmills, and um, you know, there's a lot of pieces to this puzzle. So it's really exciting. Things are starting to come together. So thanks for hanging out. Um, love you all. Be kind, and uh, we'll uh, keep you informed and out in front of all of this. It's kind of neat to be, I mean, this is about as real time as I can make it, um, you know? So thanks for, thanks for coming along. Talk to you later.